Fetal Circulation Introduction The fetal heart initiates at 22 days of gestation, this indicates the initiation of fetal circulation. Gas exchange initially takes place in the yolk sac until the placenta entirely takes over. This transition occurs around 10 weeks gestation. Fetal circulation differs from adult circulation in a variety of ways to support the unique physiologic needs of a developing fetus. Characteristic structural features of the fetal circulation The umbilical vein It is the major vessel carrying oxygenated blood to the fetus from the placenta. The saturation of its contents is usually about 70%. It sits alongside the umbilical ateres in the umbilical cord, packed in Wharton's jelly. Ductus venosus. It is a thin, trumpet-shaped vessel connecting the intra-abdominal umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. It basically points the flow of umbilical venous blood directly at the opening of the foramen oval, with a little help from the astacan valve. Foramen oval. It is a small atrial septal defect which closes at birth and forms the fossa ovalis. Blood flow through this opening is approximately the same as the flow through the pulmonary circulation, and half of what is pupted through the ductus. Ductus arteriosus. It is a short wide blood vessel which connects the pulmonary trunk to the descending aorta. It is approximately the same size as the pulmonary trunk, and conveys about twice the blood flow of the pulmonary circulation before birth. Umbilical arteries. These are conduits for deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. When one describes this stuff as deoxygenated, it is important to remember that it is the same level of oxygen as what supplies the fetal lower body. These vessels originate from the common iliac arteries and wind spirally up the umbilical cord together with the umbilical vein. Oxygenated blood from the placenta returns via the umbilical vein. The umbilical vein distributes 40% of its flow to the liver, 60% of its flow to the inferior vena cava, via the ductus venosus. The inferior vena cava drains into the right atrium, from the right atrium, the flow splits into parallel circuits, into the right ventricle, and then into pulmonary circulation then back to the left atrium and left ventricle, into the systemic circulation via the ductus arteriosus, which connects the pulmonary trunk to the proximal descending aorta, into the left atrium via the foramen oval, and then to the left ventricle, this is mainly IVC blood, directed there by the astacan valve. respiratory changes and other changes at birth. As soon as the baby is born, the foramen oval, ductus arteriosus, ductus venosus and umbilical vessels are no longer needed. The sphincter in the ductus venosus constricts, so that all blood entering the liver passes through the hepatic sinusoids. Occlusion of the placental circulation causes an immediate fall of blood pressure in the IVC and right atrium. Circulatory adjustments at birth. Increasing uptake of oxygen by lungs, first and subsequent breaths, induces a vasoconstriction of ductus venosus and ductus arteriosus. Aeration of the lungs at birth is associated with 1. A dramatic fall in pulmonary vascular resistance due to lung expansion. 2. A marked increase in pulmonary blood flow, thus raising the left atrial pressure above that of IVC. 3. A progressive thinning of the walls of the pulmonary arteries, due to stretching as lungs increase in size with first few breaths. Shunts at birth. Foramen oval. During fetal life the foramen oval allows most of the oxygenated blood entering the right atrium from the IVC to pass into the left atrium. Closes at birth due to increased pulmonary blood flow and pulmonary venous return to left heart causing the pressure in the left atrium to be higher than in the right atrium. The increased left atrial pressure then closes the foramen oval against the septum segungem. The output from the right ventricle now flows entirely into the pulmonary circulation. Ductus arteriosus. The ductus arteriosus constricts at birth but there is often a small shunt of blood from the aorta to the left pulmonary artery for a few days in a healthy, 
full term infant in premature infants and in those with persistent hypoxia the ductus arteriosus may remain open for much longer oxygen is the most important factor in controlling closure of the ductus arteriosus in full term infants closure of the ductus arteriosus appears to be mediated by bradykinin a substance released by the lungs upon initial inflation umbilical arteries umbilical arteries constrict at birth to prevent loss of infant's blood Umbilical cord is not tied for 30-60 seconds so that blood flow through umbilical vein continues, transferring fetal blood from placenta to the infant. The closure of the fetal vessels and the foramen oval is initially a functional change, later anatomic closure results from proliferation of endothelial and fibrous tissues. Adult derivatives of fetal vascular structures over a period of months these fetal vessels form non-functional ligaments, and fetal structures such as the foramen oval persist as anatomic vestiges of the prenatal circulatory system. Foramen oval forms fossa ovalis, umbilical vein, intra-abdominal part, as a ligamentum tears, ductus venosus as a ligamentum venosum, umbilical arteries and abdominal ligaments as a medial umbilical ligaments, superior vesicular artery supplies bladder. Ductus arteriosum forms the ligamentum arteriosum, 